We're now going to consider how to use calculus to relate displacement, velocity and acceleration. I'm making the assumption that you're comfortable differentiating and integrating polynomials. If this is not the case, now will be a good time to go and revise how to differentiate and integrate polynomials. So as we've discussed, velocity is the change in displacement with time. So we can write the equation, the velocity is equal to ds dt, where s here stands for the displacement. Now another way that we could write this is that the velocity is equal to s dot. So when we put a dot over something, it indicates that we're differentiating with respect to time. So the dot is the same as the d dt part of the ds dt. Now with this equation we can consider it separately in each of the three dimensions. So we can write that the velocity in the x direction is equal to dx dt. So to show that the velocity is in the x direction in this case we give it a little subscript x. Or we could write this if we want as x dot. So we can write similar equations for the y and the z directions. So we can say v subscript y is equal to dy dt which is equal to y dot and vz is equal to dz dt which is equal to z dot. Now the acceleration is the change of velocity with time. So we can write that the acceleration is equal to dv dt or this is equal to v dot and as the velocity is equal to the derivative of the displacement, the acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement. So we can write that the acceleration is equal to d dt of ds dt, or we can write that the acceleration is equal to s with two dots over the top to show that we're taking the second derivative with respect to time. And again, this is true in each of the three dimensions. So we can write A subscript X standing for the acceleration in the X direction is equal to dVx dt, or we can say it's equal to d squared X dt squared. And again, Ay is equal to dVy dt, which is equal to d squared y dt squared and az is equal to dvz dt which is equal to d squared z dt squared. So let's have a look at an example problem now. The displacement of an object is described by x is equal to 5.0 t squared plus 3.0 t plus 2.0. Part 1. What is the original displacement of the object? Part 2. Write an expression for vx. Part 3. What is the velocity at t equals 1.0 seconds? Part 4. Write an expression for ax. Part 5. What is the acceleration at t is equal to 1.0 seconds? Okay, so to do part 1, we're asked what is the original displacement of the object. So in order to do that, because we're trying to find the original one, we'll need to substitute in t equals 0. So we can write x. Now to show that we're evaluating it at time 0, it's common to show that with brackets with 0 after the x. So we're just substituting in 0 wherever we see a t squared, a t. So this is 5.0 5 times 0 squared plus 3.0 times 0 plus 2.0. And so 5 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is also 0, so this is equal to 2.0. So the displacement at time 0 is 2. If there was units up here, we put units down here as well. We'd assume if there weren't units given that the units for this are metres. Part 2. Write an expression for Vx. So we know that the velocity in the x direction is equal to dx dt. So we need to differentiate this expression with respect to t. And so we've got, differentiating this first part, 5t squared. So that'll be 5 times, when we differentiate t squared, we end up with 2t. And then we've got 3t that we need to differentiate. 
When we differentiate t, we just get 1. So this is 3. And then when we differentiate 2, which is just a constant with no t, we end up with 0. So our expression here can be written as 5 times 2, so that's 10t plus 3. Part 3 then asks us, what is the velocity at 1 second? So we'll show that we're evaluating it at 1 second with brackets after our vx. And now we just need to substitute 1 wherever we see a t in our expression for vx. So we've got 10 times 1 plus 3, which is equal to 13. Part 4, write an expression for ax. So we know that ax is equal to dvx dt. So we just need to differentiate our expression here for vx. So when we differentiate 10t, differentiating t just gives us 1, so we end up with 10. And then when we differentiate 3, because that's a constant, we end up with 0. So our acceleration is equal to 10. Part v, we then need to find out what this is at 1 second. When we substitute 1 in here, we can't, there's no t, so we just end up with 10. So this is something moving with a constant velocity of 10, and if it's usual SI units, then it's meters per second per second. 